Well, it's another nice spring day here. The snow's melting, the gravel's opening up, and the water's finally draining down. And it's even t-shirt weather. I mean, how much better could it get, right? So I found myself in one of those little life situations where you own a product and you really like that product and the product treats you good at the same time. So the only logical thing you can do in that scenario is get another one just like it. Got back late last night from a six hour long haul from the, the big city. Took the old 94 power stroke down there and picked up this unit. And on the trailer, we got a 1995 Ford F-350, 7.3 power stroke. Only downfall is she's got an automatic, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. You can't have everything you want, like a, a ZF-5. So she's not as classy as this truck, but she's still pretty classy. Now this truck came off the north slope originally, which uh, the telltale signs of that is the, the old Arctic grill blanket and the bumper with a you know a pinnel hitch and receiver on it she's got a slip tank in it classy old headache rack that's pretty beefy and uh just just things like that and uh of course you got some numbering on the on the fender there for it being a fleet truck and whatnot now uh this thing was down near the ocean after it came off the slope, so she's got a little bit of rust, but not too bad. I mean, it, it wasn't down there its whole life, obviously, otherwise it'd be way worse than it is. So overall, it's not too bad. Of course, the F-350s have the solid front axle where the F-250s got the Dana 50 twin traction beam, but uh, everyone wants to put these in them. Oh well, but... Uh, much more desirable is this setup here being a 350 with that axle and a lot of people like the crew cabs for more room so i'd say it's pretty good we can uh hop up here and have a peek on the interior real quick she's uh not too bad just needs a good cleanup and stuff like that she's uh a lower model truck than the blue one this is an xl where the blue one's an xlt so this one's got crank windows instead of electric and manual locks and such and uh yeah she's not too bad needs uh the usual little bit of work like putting this stuff in that people have monkeyed with and it's got the old school ford control unit for high idle and all that good stuff so that's pretty neat another uh sign of being a slope unit and uh some little bit of rust on the rocker but i don't think that it's uh totally through anywhere so that's good and the seats are like amazing under these covers so how can you not like that and the, the headliner is even decent I forget, because it's got no batteries in it right now, it's either got 120,000 or 150 something thousand miles on it. So being that it's a 7.3 power stroke, that's barely even broke in yet. I worked on uh, a 97 one time, and that one had 344,000 on it, and the cylinders still look like new. I mean, you could see cross hatching in them still, so being that this one's that low i have uh high hopes that she's a pretty healthy motor still now we'll look back here also good shape just needs a good cleanup and somebody has put in a secondary heater for back here because the hoses run underneath the truck and up through the floor so that's kind of a uh a kind of hack setup but i'm sure it works good and uh yeah pretty decent see if i can do this without falling backwards off the trailer and she's also got a big old slip tank that is plumbed in for the truck to run off of because they have bypassed this front tank i think the back tank is still hooked up can't remember but she'll run off of this one and she's got a classy heavy duty headache rack so that's neat with some, you know, reverse lights. And then it's got the angle iron all the way down the bed. Pretty uh, stout setup. And the bed itself is actually in really good shape. It's not all hammered and dented and beat up. 
and the tailgate is somewhat straight too not all uh you know curved out from having stuff laid on it she's got the usual tow frame pretty decent bumper a little bit hammered in right here but not too bad this thing's been sitting for about 10 years the guy told me and of course the tags kind of tell you that it's been sitting for uh roughly 10 years he said he was driving it and then all of a sudden it quit on him and he screwed around with it here and there replaced some sensors and messed with it and monkeyed around type situation and then just gave up on it let it sit in his driveway and uh was actually sinking into the gravel when i picked it up so you could tell he just kind of lost interest in it but uh i kind of have a good idea of what went wrong with it and we'll go over that here in a minute but uh i mean overall pretty decent truck needs the you know the bug guard or whatever you want to call it on the hood replaced and needs new headlight lenses and all that that aren't you know foggy and faded out like these probably put something like i put in this truck in it but uh yeah she's pretty good happy with it so far now the uh the next step is to get it running she's actually pretty clean under here and uh like I said, not being in the Anchorage city weather its whole life, it's uh, not as crusty under here as most. So that's that's a bonus. And the guy did tell me he had the transmission rebuilt like 5,000 miles ago. And I did pull the dipstick and look at the fluid before I made a deal on it. And she's got a little bit of black on the fluid and... I don't know of course i couldn't drive it to see how it felt so i kind of took a little bit of a gamble on that but looking at the transmission you can tell it's been out of course it's all grease caked again already being a diesel but looked at it inspected it a little bit there's some black in the fluid which that could be you know just average clutch material from the transmission being broken in and worn in like it should be or it could be that somebody did a bad job and something's going to, to haywire in there, but you know, we'll find out when we find out. So there's the basic walk around of the truck. Now we'll uh, pop the hood open. And I'll show you guys under there. And there you have it, good old 7.3. Now being that this is a 95, there's a, a few differences under the hood here compared to the 94 and a half because this was the first year of the 7.3 power stroke right after the 7.3 idi so being a first year they're going to have you know their own little quirks and features that ford was still trying to figure out and then from 95 to 97 of the 7.3 being in the obs body style they uh, better figured things out and changed some features and designs so things like the cooling system is a little different on this one as opposed to that truck and uh, things like that i'll have to park these two next to each other and kind of go over all the differences between uh, a first year power stroke and uh, like 95 up to 97 but anyways um pretty much everything under here uh, appears to be all stock hasn't been uh, messed with or hopped up like i did to my blue one and uh, that's basically it i mean it's still got part of the uh the power stroke plastic cover on it the dude told me he had the lid up forgot it was up and he closed the hood and it shattered so that's why it's missing the little flip up lid but most people take those covers off and pitch them anyway so probably finish taking that one off so you can better see things on the motor and whatnot kind of kind of helps for that and uh yeah i mean she's not too greasy and dirty just you know basic oil and dust on everything of course being down near the salt she's got rust on the pulleys and the belt and whatnot from sitting for so long but uh, one of my determining factors for buying this um, i wanted to hear it crank over before i made a deal on it so i borrowed some batteries and hooked them up and uh, jumped the solenoid 
and cranked it over for a bit because I wanted to make sure it had nice even cranking, sounded like the compression was in it, and you know, make sure it's got no funky noises or anything in it like that. And uh, it sounded good, sounded pretty good cranking over, so that's uh, one of the things that convinced me to get it. So now the uh, next thing is to get it running. Now the guy said he uh, he messed around with sensors and whatnot. He didn't really say what, but probably the cam sensor. I'll have to uh, crank it over and watch the tack and see if the tack does anything while it's cranking over. If it doesn't, that'll show me that uh, it's got a cam sensor problem. So if it's not that sensor, I did notice, and I checked this before we made a deal on it, but I reached down in there and on the back of the high pressure oil pump, there's the IPR and the IPR is the injection pressure regulator. And they have a, like a, a little tin nut, a three quarter inch nut on the back side of them. And that's what holds the, uh, the whole thing together. And it's very common on these because, you know, it's a diesel, it vibrates and shakes and everything 24 seven when it's running. So things like to work loose and uh, those IPRs, the nut on them likes to back off and your IPR gets loose and then the solenoid can't work properly. And uh, you know, it's a pressure regulator. So if it's not regulating pressure or sensing pressure, then you're gonna have problems. And being that this is a Huey injection system, it requires oil pressure to fire the injectors. Uh, when that whole setup is, you know, out of whack, it's going to cause issues and not fire. So um, I reached down in there. The thing is absolutely floppy and loose. So I'm uh, I'm kind of betting that if I tighten that up, this thing will fire up. But uh, we'll see. If that's not it, it might be something else that's simple. Or it could be something complicated. We're going to have to find out. But yeah, other than that, she's all stock. Still has the original, you know, rubber boots on everything. The orange Ford Motorcraft stuff that uh, everyone tends to replace for good reason because they get old and crack up and get weak and whatnot. And yeah, she's probably going to need all of that. Still has the nice stock restrictive downpipe. So that's going to have to come out of there and get thrown in a ditch and needs a three inch downpipe. Somebody's probably done, you know, glow plug relays before on it because they like to go out and not work right. It did sound like the glow plug system was working when I turned the key on to uh, crank it over, even though I had to jump the solenoid because uh, the link from the solenoid down to the starter was just clicking, so just bypassed it and jumped it there. But other than that, she looks pretty good under here. Just needs a good pressure wash and uh, a better air intake system because those things are kind of junk. And yeah, something else I looked for, there wasn't any motor oil in the coolant. So just little things like that to watch out for when you're buying one of these things. And the oil's full, just typical nice and black and dirty. And then once we get it running, we'll see how much blow by it has. But seeing that it has like roughly half the mileage of my blue truck, I wouldn't suspect it has any blow by in it. And there's the transmission fluid. Not too bad. I'm kind of thinking it's just from being broken, but we'll see. Oh, there we go. So yeah, I mean, that that's about it under here. It's got some auxiliary wiring going on, probably for these lights and stuff like that, or whatever else they had on it that might've got taken out before this thing got sold off of the, uh, the slope. But yeah, battery cables seem all right. The ones on my blue truck were all corroded and junk, but these seem pretty good yet. So won't have to deal with that. Should crank over good enough and be nice and happy. So yeah, get this thing unloaded and throw some batteries in it and start playing with it, I guess. 
Something else I wanted to show off real quick. We'll crawl up in here. I was digging through the glove box earlier. Just kind of seeing what kind of treasures I could find. And this truck still has the original Ford booklet and manuals with it. So how cool is that? Warranty information. Tire manual. Not sure if that came with this truck or not, but pretty. Oh yeah, 94. That's pretty cool. Four wheeling with Ford. Power stroke. Look at that. Sweet. That's awesome. And we got some Motorcraft brand parts in here. Got a uh, couple glow plug relays. Well, that one's there. Out of the box now. And uh, little odds and ends. I did notice it's got a valley lift pump laying in here. So I don't know if this one was going to get thrown in it at some point. Or this one came out of it. I see it is a Carter pump. So... No telling on that. Once we get it cranking over, we'll uh, check the fuel bowl and see if it's getting fuel. And if not, I guess it'll need a pump, but we will get to that when we get to that. And yeah, I mean, that's that's about it so far. Just uh, fun to dig through a new rig when you get it home. See what you can find. It's always a fun thing to do. Just look at this old Ford quality here. Can't beat that. Well, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed the little walk around of the new rig here. Now, not sure if I'm gonna do any videos on getting the thing running or not. I mean, it's kind of one of those mainstream things that a bunch of channels have done is uh, playing with these kind of trucks. So we'll see what I get filmed and what I don't get filmed. Might just, uh, roll the thing off the trailer and start messing with it and have some fun and uh maybe do a video after what i find and and figure out so i mean if you guys want to see any of the work to this thing or me playing around with it let me know down in the comments but yeah hope you guys enjoyed the little walk around here and getting to uh check out something new so till the next video thanks for watching be sure to uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy this stuff. And also check out the merch store. Link is down below. Grab some of that cool stuff. Definitely supports me and helps me uh, pick up new projects and get the uh, current projects out of the way and finished up. So greatly appreciate that. And yeah, till the next one, I'll see you guys later.